Hi, and welcome to another Hopper on Microcontrollers video. Um, Hopper is a modern semicolon and curly brace language with a uh, full symbolic debugger um, that runs on Windows and allows you to program microcontrollers or 8-bit uh, CPUs. If you want to know more about it, there's plenty more videos on this channel. Anyway, um, recent news, Raspberry Pi Foundation released a new version of the Pi Pico. Uh, more to the point, they released a new um, uh, ARM chip, so the RP2350. Um, so what they did is they did an update to the Pi Pico, which is deliberately a drop-in replacement. So it is absolutely identical to the Pi Pico, but it just has the new um, uh, CPU on it. Um, they did increase the uh, flash memory from uh, two megs to four megs. But I find it annoying that they stuck to the uh, micro USB connector and that they, instead of a USB C connector, and that they still have not put in a reset button on the board. So, you know, you have to manually wire your reset or plug and unplug, and eventually that'll break off. So, um, I really want to get my hands on one of these so that we could test it and get it to work with Hopper. But of course, there's none available because um, you know they're in huge demand because it's brand new. Um, but some of the partners who make um, other boards have uh, got on with it. So uh, Pi Maroni has this uh, tiny 2350. And more to the point, Little Bird Electronics in Australia has them. And I got one overnighted to me, uh, which is pretty cool. So I have one of these now. Um, the way you get the Hopper runtime onto your uh, microcontroller is very similar to the way you would get MicroPython onto it. Um, you just download a, a UF2 file from the um, Hopper repo on GitHub and just drag and drop it onto your, you plug your device in. Um, you hold the boot, the boot select button down uh, while you plug it. So there's the boot button, the top one on this device. Um, yeah, this little Pi Maroni Tiny 20, uh, 2350 has a reset button and it has a USB-C um, connector, not a micro USB. So I'm not too sad that I couldn't get the um, Raspberry Pi version for this uh, introduction since this one has those two features, which I really do value. Um, anyway, to, to initialize, I was showing you something that wasn't on the screen. Let me show you this. I was talking about this. So this is the little tiny, uh, Pi Maroni, you know, it's the size of it. It's, uh, you know, size, there's my thumb. Um, yeah, it has a reset button and a micro USB port. Anyway, back to the, um, you have two files. I obviously don't want to have to build any more of these than necessary. Um, so I try to make it generic. So um, I've had to add uh, Pico2 and Pico2 no load for the new CPU. But I'm keeping it generic so you can drag and drop that onto your Pi Maroni board, right? Or any other clone of a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and then the W is different because it's also, it's slightly bigger um, because it has Wi-Fi in it. If you don't use Wi-Fi, they're the same. You can just drag it, drag and drop it on. But now, of course, there'll be a two with Wi-Fi eventually as well. Um, anyway, so I don't want to have to build any more of these than I need to. So one of the nice things about the um, the Pi Pico is if, if I've got this configured for the Pi right now, if you go down and you look at the flash size, it's only two megs. And I always try and maximize how much I can use for um, for my flash flash file system, right? Because Hopper has a file system um, in in the built-in flash, and this means that to be able to keep the you you have two files generic, I could never go over one meg of space for for the uh, flash file system. Um, because of these defaults, if I wanted to actually just make a Pi Pico one, um, rather than making a specific one for the board you're doing, I just wanted to do generic ones. Anyway, so if I switch to Pi Pico 2, 
now I've got four megs of flash, which means I can give uh, a whole three megs to the file system, which means all these other devices that I've been using for years already that have had way more than two megs of flash now at least have three megs instead of one meg for the file system because we're never going to need more than one meg for the, for the uh, actual runtime. You know, the runtime itself um, is currently only, it's still less than one meg, including the Wi-Fi. So it's not going to get much bigger than that. Anyway, enough about the plumbing. Um, let's get to the, to the demo. So what have we got here? So um, I've, I use um, the common uh, There's a common uh, Raspberry Pi Pico uh, uh, core library um, for Arduino um, that's written by Earl um, Philhauer, Philhauer. And I use that, that's what I actually use to generate my runtime, but I also use his um, board definitions to make it so that my board definitions don't have to be baked into the runtime. So they're in Hopper source code and they get compiled when you compile your program. So I regenerated um, board definition files um, to work with uh, um, to work with a new processor. This one here. Um, I actually have to make this one up because he doesn't have it yet, but he will. But he, there's some of the others that he does have already. Anyway, so why do you need that? Well, it's because things like the built-in LED are going to be on different pin, pins. Does it have a built-in LED? Does it have, you know, built-in RGB? Yes, it does. Built-in LEDs on pin 19. So that means that I'm right-clicking on things here. If if I, well, let's just build this. Um, if I right-click on LED, it's going to go in here and it's going to use the built-in LED um, identifier, which is going to be different depending on your board. Okay, anyway, this is how you use one of these new boards. You just um, go and look in the boards folder for the name of your board and include that. Um, and then this is the sort of uh, generic pink blink program for Hopper. So we'll build that. And F5 to launch and then the debugger. And there we are. And F5 again to run it. And we've got a blinky light. Um, Power's been on for quite a while, obviously. So this is the number of seconds since I powered it up or reset it, I guess. Okay. Um, anyway, that's blink. Um, let's go and do something more interesting. So an, another imp major improvement that I was keen, this is why I was keen to see how, how it worked, is performance. So if we look at, I use this Mandelbrot for performance. Um, there's a reference to where I got this stuff from. Um, here I can, because I'm not going to use an LED with a specific pin, I can use the generic board. Um, so that should actually be Pi Pico 2. Like that. Let's go have a look at it. There we go. And if we go down, there's a, re, you know, it, it's this stuff to do with the clock speed. So the new device, the RP2350, uh, is quite a lot faster. So its default speed is 150 megahertz, whereas the uh, RP2040's default speed was 133. So I've put into the... Uh, the reason I have enumerations for these is because I've tested these speeds. They don't all work. Not all speeds work. And so these are, te these are speeds that I've tested. In fact, that one didn't work, so delete it. So these are the t speeds that I've tested, and one of them I've got is to emulate the RP2040, 133, and that actually works. So let's go start with that. We'll start with um, the same speed as the previous device. And I've put in a three-second delay at the end here so that we can... Um, See, see how long it took. Um, so if I, if I don't run it in the debugger, because I don't want to get, I want to get full performance by running it straight from the monitor. So Control F5. 
that it draws this waiting three seconds, 759 milliseconds, 759 milliseconds. So this would have taken 759 milliseconds to draw on the, um, the, on the first version of the iPico, so the RP2040. And then the default speed on the RP2350 is going to be a bit faster. So it was, what did I say, 700 and something, right? And we're down to 671. And then in my experimentation with overclocking it, I can actually double the speed. So we can get it to run at a whopping 300 megahertz, which is pretty fast for um, one of these Pi pieces of silicon, fastest I've seen so far. So 300 meg megahertz, it's only going to take, you know, just over 300 milliseconds. So it's pretty impressive. Um, I've got one more performance demo that I often use is the Civ benchmark from Byte magazine from the 80s. So again, um, so again, I just have to choose the Pi Pico 2 board rather than the Pi Pico board. And that's so that it knows the correct overclocking speeds. Um, the pins are the same in the Pico. So if I wasn't doing something specific to the Pico 2, I could just use that board. It wouldn't make any difference. Load it in the debugger. And control F5 to run it without the debugger. So on the 2040, it would have taken 235 milliseconds, 235 on the old device. Um, default speed on the new device, the 2350. Rebuild that, load in the debugger, control F5. So from 235, so from 235 down to 208. So that's what you get going from 133 megahertz to 150 megahertz makes sense that it kind of lines up but if we overclock it and uh full disclosure the fastest i managed to overclock the um 2040 was 270 megahertz so it's it's only 30 30 megahertz faster but um i'll take it so let's run that so 300 megahertz so original was um, 235 then about 208 and if you're running at 300 megahertz it's already down to 103. so yeah uh, two and a half times as fast as a generic um, original um, not bad um, and i've been running it uh, i've been running it continuously overclocked for a while it doesn't get warm so that's pretty nice um, I'm sure there's a downside to overclocking it. Otherwise, they would have made that the default speed, but I haven't seen anything go wrong with it yet. Anyhow, um, thanks for watching. And I can recommend this little device. Um, it's actually also exactly the same pin configuration as their Tiny2040. So this is a drop-in replacement if your project's already using a um, Tiny2040. You can just use the Tiny2350. Um, and the two things that um, are most obvious that we've gained from it is a little bit more speed and a lot more um, uh, flash available for the built-in file system for Hopper. Um, there's also other interesting things with this uh, with the new version of the chip. They've got two um, RISC-V cores on it as well, um, which is probably going to be fun to play with, but right now, it's doing just fine running hopper on the um, arm on the arm cores. Cool. I look forward to testing more of these devices as they come out.